uh, Jack proposed to Hilda on the very first day. <laughs> Your husband of three months comes in one day and says, Hilda, guess what? <laughs> We're going to Nuremberg. What do you think? What would you want? I'm just an innocent little girl from a country town in Texas. But if you're going, I'm going. <laughs> I said I was identified as a file clerk, which is about the, like being a private in the Army. And I really didn't have much to do, particularly since the um, man who I was working under um, identified almost everything as MISC, miscellaneous. So my filing <laughs> was very simple. And the first trial, and you walk in, as I asked Jack, and the first time you take a look, and there's Herman Gehring. What was your reaction? <clears throat> he, it was, um, I guess nowadays you would call it body language, you know, the way he sat and everything. And I remember um, uh, you could, they always seemed to have the same, not the same identical body language, but they would repeat the way they sat the day before, it seemed to me, that whether they were slouching or whether they were <laughs> standing up, sitting up straight. Your role there became from a file clerk to uh, your background was as a, uh, a dietitian, mm -hmm. and then you kind of got intimately involved in the nutrition uh, of the... Well, um, the we were feeding all of the defense attorneys and all, you know, there's a tremendous support staff there. There were translators and interrogators and a lot of um, other people in addition to just the um, usual support people. They were all having lunch there and um, when we got there, everybody was having lunch off of an aluminum tray like the soldiers were using. and complaining about the food. And when Telford asked me if I thought I could do anything about it, I think that's the way he put it, <laughs> I said, yeah, I think so. And <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do, but you know, I, I was 22 years old and I thought I could do anything. <laughs> I had a big staff because Nuremberg was the center of practically everything. I mean, everything in Europe, that's where it was really focused. So the best chefs and the best former maitre d's had um, turned up there in Nuremberg and were employed, and, um, and they were good. Uh, German Defense Council, mm -hmm. and they, did they sit by themselves? Yes, they did. Was there much, well, I guess, uh, was there any fraternization among the I was not aware uh, uh, that there was. It's, they had pretty strict regulations about that at the time. The judges um, ate in their chambers, and um, our staff, um, certain ones, took it up to them. And then after I started in the cafeteria, well, I decided I would serve the judges tea about the middle of the afternoon. and. That pleased them and made them think that things were getting better, I guess, <laughs> in that department. Describe murder. Oh, it was, you can't imagine the destruction. A, a lot of the Air Force strikes had been um, aimed at Nuremberg because it was kind of that symbol where the big um, amphitheater was, where Hitler made speeches. So it was very much destroyed. And the fact that it was a walled city, a tremendous wall around most of the city. And that was torn down in certain places, you know, there would be these big gaps in it. And um, there were people out, though, every day cleaning up with uh, very um, elementary sort of tools and no, I mean, I mean, there were no big bulldozers scooping up things. They were putting things in wheelbarrows and carting off the trash and the, the debris. Describe Telford Taylor. Oh, he was um, very uh, generally looking, generally looking man. He stood straight and he had very slim and um, he was friendly, very friendly from the very beginning. He was very friendly. And um, he didn't, um, 
he didn't act like a general, so to speak, but he looked like the part. He was a wonderful dancer. He was a very tall man, and um, they had an orchestra that played at a place called the Officers Club there, and uh, I know when we went there that I enjoyed dancing with him. The Russians were wonderful dancers, too. They, they really knew how to get you around over the floor. <laughs> Of course, these, I guess, were the prosecutors and their assistants and maybe their translators that were, or probably not the translators, but anyway, you know, it was that part of the Russian delegation, but it was only when I would dance with one of them that I was very much aware of them being there. Well, I understand most motto was quite a dancer. Oh, the women <laughs> laughed and talked about jumping and pumping with my smano. He, he sort of jumped as he danced, and he would hold it, and he would pump his arms up and down like that. So we would laugh about, oh, you, I see you've been jumping and pumping with my smile. <laughs> Isn't that awful? <laughs> that term that was used in the indictments called crimes against humanity. I think if we uh, know that such crimes can be committed, but they can also be prevented if we keep our eye on keeping our newspapers and television reporters and all of that as honest and as uh, level-based as we can in presenting the news that is developing. As a uh as an observer of Jack's role in Nuremberg, what, what really was it? He in, in was, was he was uh, very he was he was not high pitched or, or he was low key like you see him here. That's uh, and he was um, he depended a lot on these um, statistics that as he said, were so, um, in, um, you couldn't question them. They were the Nazi, um, and he would lay that out. I do remember one time that something that he had said, was it he or was it his person in the chair, the witness, that got misinterpreted uh, mis uh, translated, that is, because there's trans simultaneous translations. And consequently, it must have been a misinterpretation, uh, mistranslation of what uh, he had said, because the witness became very agitated, and Jack couldn't understand, and he was trying to sort of calm this around, and then he asked the translator to um, repeat what he had said, and this time it came out accurate. I don't remember the whole thing, but I do remember that little incident, and I happened to be there and was and saw him. <laughs> Not what he, but he he didn't bluster, he didn't uh, shout. He depended on his. Um, uh, he knew what he had collected in the way of evidence, and he just presented it. And and well, you know, we were talking earlier about the fact that. Um, Jackson was such a marvelous writer, and I think one of the things that Telford appreciated about Jack and used Jack was a lot in uh, preparing opening statements and things like that. He could put together in a logical order without too much falderal. Uh, he's not a great user of uh, adverbs and adjectives like I am when I'm writing, but uh, you know, he just gives it to you, but he does it in a very good way. I was full of pride when Jack was doing his work and um, being the one that was presenting or cross-examining and that kind of thing, because he was good at that and, uh, and he liked doing it too.